Hello everyone, this is Scarzig, and welcome to Duelist 101. Today we're going to be talking about Turn 1 Plays. So if we pop over here to our uh, little grid we got going on here, I wanted to talk about, I believe first and foremost, uh, about how important having something to play onto the board in your opening turn is uh, in Duelist because the mana curve starts out at 2, right? Player 1 starts with 2 mana, player 2 starts with 3 mana. Already that acceleration is going to increase the amount of power you're seeing on the board in the early game. And so taking advantage of that is, you know, really benefits you. And because you need to start contesting uh, the center of the board, so you can take mana tiles and ramp into even stronger plays, or have that extra mana you might need to play a removal spell to deal with your opponent's board, that whole thing. It's super important to have that good opening. So if we uh, look at the board here, your most uh, common opening that you're going to be seeing, right, is uh, stepping two forward with the general and then playing a minion diagonally. And I think that for the most part, everybody plays down here diagonally. This is, uh, this is equivalent. It doesn't matter where you play the minion, right, uh, after you move two forward. But the thing is, uh, I think that everybody just plays down here out of habit. I think it's because that space is closer to you, so it's just like a shorter distance to drag <laughs> the minion from your hand. But anyway, um, again, not just because you want to get this body on the board to begin contesting. This ends up having a lot of uh, really great implications for your development onto the board because the minion that you develop can move forward and uh, you know potentially pressure your opponent if they want to develop anything on this center tile closest to them or attack their general directly if you're playing a very very aggressive deck um, you can also move down like this to ramp up to four mana which is very important going two mana into four mana is is absolutely huge in this game um, there is potential also to go like two mana into four and then that way you can step forward and then play another two mana minion plus a two mana spell of some kind for an additional effect, a buff perhaps, or a removal spell to help counter what your opponent's doing. Um, so this, honestly, this position just sets you up to take control of the center of the board immediately. And so player two needs to, uh, you know, start respecting you right from the bat, right off the get-go. I think I like completely missed those, uh, messed those two up. But anyway, um, so this is, again, the most common opening you're going to be seeing in Duelist. And in order to take advantage of this, it is important to be running between 9 and 12 two-drops. That's generally like the, uh, the accepted number. Some people have made posts actually crunching the numbers on that. But it gives you um, the highest chance of getting a two-drop in the early game without, you know, clogging your deck up too much because two-minute minions are great early and then they become less good, of course, as the game goes on. But you're going to need to start having more impact on the board. Um, so, again, this is uh, what you're going to be seeing and that is why it is so strong because you just get so much pressure uh, right into what your opponent is trying to develop in the early turns and then you uh, have a higher chance of zoning them away and taking this mana for yourself. Um, it's also important that even if for some reason you do not have a uh, two mana minion to play, for some reason uh, you're, you know, you're going through your deck, you, you mulligan two cards and you replace and you still don't get your two mana minion, it's still important to move forward with your general because you want to be as close to the center as possible to at least take one of these uh, one of these mana tiles for yourself, right? Because if you say, "Oh no, I uh, I don't have a, a turn one play. I don't want to go close to my opponent and then get you know swarmed by their minions and overwhelmed," it's uh, not that big a deal. Because if you walk forward and uh, you want to contest the center and your opponent walks forward and does something really, really nasty, then you have the chance to still back off if need be. You can even uh, walk up, you know, and out of the way. But that's that's getting a bit too far ahead. Um, I want to specifically talk about turn one opening plays. Um, so you have your uh, neutral two drops like Primus Fist, Healing Mystic are really great includes for any deck, especially budget lists. And every faction has at least one decent two drop that they can run. 
and so already you're up to nine and uh, then you can just sprinkle in maybe two to three copies of another two drop that you really like or really think would fit your deck or your early game uh, I know maybe Azure Herald or Golem Allergist, or you know, some factions even have decent uh, other decent two drops as well that you can sprinkle in. But when you are playing diagonally like this, don't be afraid. You know, don't don't feel bad if you are missing out on your Healing Mystic or Primus Fist opening Gambit. Right? It's more important to get that body on the board than it is to get that uh, that opening Gambit in the early turns of the game. So just get that body down and uh, start contesting the center. If you're playing Magmar, there is a chance that you can use Flash Reincarnation to bring out a four mana minion on turn one. The, uh, the most common card that you will see as part of that play would be the Sunsteel Defender, which is another great budget card because it's neutral and can go into any deck. It's really, really solid uh, if you do have room for it. So uh, Sunsteel Defender, Spelljammer, Hailstone Golem, uh, these are great four mana minions that you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, good flash reincarnation targets, I should say, from Magmar, right? Um, furthermore, if you are playing, say, Abyssian, and you have a minion that, like the Gloom Chaser, that's going to summon a Wraithling when it comes into play, if you are playing your diagonal play, and then you say, oh no, that, that Wraithling spawned right on the mana tile, and then I don't have a one mana play to do, right? And then it basically that mana goes to waste, and so it's really unfortunate. What you can do to sort of counteract that is simply play the Gloom Chaser on the center tile in front of you here, right? Because the Wraithling is spawned randomly, and that means that you have these two spaces here, right, where it's not very good for the Wraithling to summon, but if you happen to get any of these uh, five tiles, then you are still able to uh, move over here and ramp up to four mana. So by placing, again, the Gloom Chaser here, you have um, a pretty decent chance of still having the equivalent value of being able to ramp up to four and you don't have a chance of that wraithling wasting the mana tile so that's uh definitely something you want to watch out for there when it comes to playing gloom chaser specifically i know that um this is a card that you're going to be seeing a lot more uh in the lower stages of the ladder in higher level in higher level abyssian decks it's not really run but um, if you are forced to use that, or if you'd like to be just running a swarm list in general, then that is something to consider when running the Gloom Chaser. Furthermore, this isn't as big an issue if you're playing Vitruvian and you're, you're running Obelisks, right? Um, for example, uh, because the Dervish is spawned at the beginning of your next turn, uh, you don't have to worry about the uh the dervish stealing the mana from you right so you could uh play it down here um if you wanted to here let me uh let me redraw that if you wanted to play your ethereal obelisk uh down here there is a chance that the dervish spawns directly on the mana and then uh you don't have to worry about having to walk onto the mana so you get a little bit of forward movement that way you get your mana instantly and then uh, the dervish can just go about its business contesting the center or, you know, threatening uh, the center of the board here or whatever. Um, but the thing is, is with this play, you still get the weird setup where if the dervish spawns like here or here, then uh, you, you can't take this mana. If your opponent already took the center mana, then this dervish becomes a little bit wonky because you can't ramp up to four anymore, right? Uh, this dervish is basically forced to uh, just come up and maybe help you in the general trade onto the center tile. So that becomes a little bit less efficient. If you, for example, have no four mana play, then this becomes a little bit better because you go two, then you're naturally on three in the next turn, and so your general can walk forward and then take advantage of just that dervish spawning just about anywhere. Because if it spawns here, you can't get mana, but you can still walk forward, clear your opponent's minion, and then suddenly your general standing in the center, and um, 
you know, you can walk potentially up or down to take this mana. And I'm trying my best here <laughs> to focus on just the turn one opening play, but your your turn one opening is so intrinsically tied to your next turn that it's kind of hard not to just extrapolate into the future based on these certain outcomes. Um, if you really, really do want to try to ramp up to four, we do have this play, right, with the Ethereal Obelisk again, where you're summoning it on the center like a, like a Gloom Chaser. And if you didn't if you don't care about the dervish specifically spawning on the mana tile, having the chance of having the dervish spawn on the tile to get that mana for free and have it be able to move and attack, and you just want uh, a body that can help you ramp up, ramp up into four and then start playing that threat immediately, then uh, you still get the same basic uh, gloom chaser sort of uh, scenario where these two spawns end up being bad and then everything else is uh, pretty decent, right? Where, you know, these don't really do much. You can still, again, have the uh, Dervish in the bad spots, go right on forward, potentially buff them with a Dune Caster or something, and then they can uh, fight here in the center of the board. So um, Vitruvian has a little bit more nuance to their opening, just when it comes to the, the, uh, the Obelisk placement and like the Gloom Chaser uh, placement, for example. But again, these are just very small variations on that most common opening that you've probably seen in 99% of the games you've played so far and 99% of the games that you are going to play uh, all across the Duelist ladder because that is just like the one-size-fits-all granddaddy opening play. Like, that's just... That's just basically standard. And you might have even started playing this because you've noticed that when you're going second, your opponent always makes this play. Or if you've watched a lot of uh, Duelist gameplay, you notice that this play being made and you just sort of copy it, which is a good idea, right? Um, but this just sort of explains the, uh, the thought process about why exactly uh, this is so good and just so standard across the board. And I think that just about covers it in terms of, like, basic turn one plays. There's a lot more variation when it comes to, uh, when it comes to your turn one opening, especially if we get into Vanar, cards like, uh, Wings of Mechazor, Gravity Well, Snow Chaser, um, I suppose a quick caveat would be if you're playing Song High, um, they have Katara, which is a 1-mana one 1-3, one and they have a chance to draw two copies of Katara turn 1, and then you can play a Katara here and a Katara here. And then uh, you basically get, you know, <laughs> even more value because you're threatening your opponent a lot more. You're threatening not just to ramp up to 4, but to ramp up to 5. And then you have uh, potential for Mist Dragon Seal and all that, but... Uh, not to get too in-depth with that. That's just like, again, just a, a separate variation on that same opening. This uh, special diagonal play that allows you to contest the center. So, uh, again, this is just a quick uh, info dump just to give our new players a leg up. And I hope that this uh, really helped you, and I'll see you in the next one.